So, uh, it's already been said, like this talk is about sharding graphs and how to query them. Uh, and because this uh, uh, this talk is only for 20 minutes, we can like we can evaluate all the all the approaches or the possible approaches. So we are going to focus on one that we sort of like found very interesting and we led a very good results and we implemented that. And that's basically uh, splitting uh, your graph your graph database into uh, uh, in, uh, into these general subgraphs that basically have no any physical connection between them and then introducing basically query language extensions that will enable you to easily work with those, uh, with those graphs as if it was one graph. And to make it more interesting, basically we are going to uh, show this concept on an example and the example is going to be the LDBC social <laughs> network benchmark. So basically, uh, LDBC social network benchmark is a benchmark that emulates a social network and it defines the data set, uh, data model, and uh, query that parts, basically part of that, uh, of that uh, benchmark. And what is interesting about it is that the data set is, ver the graph is very strongly connected. Basically, we have a colleague who is sort of an in-house expert on LDBC benchmark, and when we, t when we told him, like, we want to basically do a sharded version of LDBC benchmark, he was like, you are crazy, that, that can't perform well. And we sort of proved him wrong. So first, like uh, before we go into the sharding, let's short introduction to the LDBC model. So we are in the picture. It's a little blurry. Uh, so basically, it's a it's a it's a, uh, so it's a social network. So uh, you, you have people, and they have some relationship. They basically have a relationship between them. That's basically the core of every social network. Then uh, the main wor uh, the main uh, workload that the people do is basically uh, post messages in forums. So <clears throat> so you, you you have you have forums uh, that which has uh, which have members and owner, and uh, also basically the main workload is that uh, people put uh, posts in those forums, and, uh, and also they can comment on the posts and comment on comments, and of course each post and comment has, has an author, or they all co uh, also can be liked by a person. And. Uh, uh, there are uh, there, uh, each uh, each forum uh, each forum uh, post or uh, comment uh, have tag basically representing its content. Uh, tag have uh, a class uh, hierarchy basically they are in hierarchy, and uh, people uh, can uh, express interest in some topics basically saying I'm interested in topics marked by those tags. And also uh, people live in cities. Cities are located in countries. And each message, meaning post and comment, have also uh, uh, basically uh, country where they were created from uh, uh, linked to them. And because like sharding, as we learned, is not just like about the data; it's also like about the workload that you want to perform. So basically, you have to when you want to shard something efficiently, you should look both at your uh, uh, at the data and also basically what you want to do with the data. So just like example, how a typical LDBC uh, query looks like. Uh, for some, in, this, in this example, it's a uh, query nine from the interactive complex category. And given a start person, you are looking for messages created by friends of that person or friends of friends. That were, and the messages have some filtering crit criteria. They have to be uh, created before a given date. So. Basically, this query kind of transfers quite, uh, uh, tra uh, traverses a quite big portion of that graph. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the interesting part. So how we just for inspiration, how we decided to shard uh, shard this model. Uh, what, what is interesting about the approach we took to sharding? We basically like evaluated many many approaches, and this is sort of like the model we came up with. Uh, what is interesting about it is, is that it's uh, asymmetric. Basically, that means that not all the shards hold, uh, uh, hold, uh, have the same data model, data set. Uh, we have uh, uh, always one person shard that basically contains all the information <coughs> about the people and basically the, the relationship between them. And then we have something that uh, the rest sh uh, of the shards are what we call forum shards. Basically, we distribute, uh, distribute all the all the forums on the remaining shards. Uh, this is a, a big advantage because the forums are sort of uh, a forest, so uh, from graph perspective, and they don't have any uh, interesting relationships between them. 
So this, this, is, this can be done kind of easily for some kind, uh, using some kind of uh, easy sharding functions for instance, uh, modulo uh, uh, forum ID. Uh, what's also interesting about this model is that uh, basically person also sort of is represented on those forum shards, but they are sort of like not full representation of the person. It's basically just a uh, node with a person ID. You can sort of like see it as a Refer, uh, like a proxy note or a reference to that uh, to that person chart that actually contains like the full information about the given person, and also like uh, for efficiency, some of the uh, data is are replicated like across all shards, which presents the uh, the location structure and the text structure, which isn't such a big problem because the data set this is a very small part of the data set. Basically, like the from the data volume point of view, the biggest part are the messages and the forums and that structure. And now <coughs> when we have the data model, the interesting part, like how we can easily query that and work with that. Right, so assuming we have our data now split over uh, some set of uh, disjoint subgraphs, uh, how could we use Cypher to, to <coughs> query across those? So we introduced two new constructs to Cypher, uh, which are use and call subquery. And use quite simply dictates what graph, uh, what subgraph uh, a certain query part should go to. So the match uh, here will go to the graph A graph and match only from that graph. And the use uh, is allowed uh, for each sort of query part. So in a union, for instance, you can uh, select two different graphs. And the other con construct is the call sub uh, subquery uh, clause, which is very similar to calling a procedure in Cypher, uh, except it's an inline uh, cipher query uh, that is the body of the uh, of the call and like any cipher uh, clause this call uh, block the subquery gets executed once per incoming row so in this case it's going to get executed three times uh, each for uh, once for each value of x as we unwind this list of three values and the return values, the return columns of the, uh, of the subquery are then exposed and av available as new variables in the outer scope. So here we return the uh, number of movies and uh, then we have access to the number of movies uh, variable uh, outside of the subquery. And these can then be combined in interesting ways. So we can have the use clause of course to dictate on what uh, on what subgraph the uh, the subquery should execute against so in this case we we just go to some uh, graph a for the duration of this subquery and then we return to the outer context uh, once it's uh, finished executing and uh, we also have support for correlated subqueries meaning that the subquery can uh, access variables coming from the outer scope. Uh, and we have opted for an explicit approach here where you need to uh, specify each parameter that you want to, uh, <coughs> each variable that you want to access inside. So that looks like this with x imports the x uh, from the outer scope. And the most powerful uh, use of uh, call and use together uh, is the dynamic uh, use lookup. So uh, where you can go to a different subgraph uh, depending <coughs> on data that's coming in. So this is again uh, sort of a correlated subquery uh, because you sort of choose uh, what graph to execute against based on the value of this graph ID uh, variable. So each ex execution of the of the inner uh, of the subquery goes to a different subgraph. 
Right, so let's look at this in the context of uh, one of the LDBC queries. How would the cipher actually look to implement one of these? So this is uh, interactive complex number six from the LDBC queries. Uh, and uh, it reads like this. I've uh, expressed it in some sort of uh, pseudocode here. So we're given a person and we're given a tag. We want to find friends and friends of friends of this person. Then we're gonna, we want to find the posts made by these friends uh, that have this tag tag. And then the final result is basically all other tags of uh, this uh, set of posts that we have found. Okay, so how would that look? So we would start with a subquery that goes to the person shard. Uh, remember, we have the person's uh, network in one shard, and then we have sort of different forum shards containing the posts and uh, the bulk of the data. So we go here, we match uh, persons and uh, uh, friends of friends, uh, and then we return uh, just a collection of the friend IDs. So now we've taken care of the friend of friends uh, part of this query. And then we continue by uh, going to each of the shards, each of the remaining shards, the forum shards. Uh, we import this uh, friend IDs to each of them. And we basically reboot the query at this point by uh, matching for friends where the ID is in this uh, friend IDs collection. So it's sort of a manual uh, passing uh, of data through uh, to the different uh, parts of the query. <coughs> this is an all right. Uh, and at the end, we do a final global aggregation. So what we actually need to return is the tag name for each of these tags that we found. And then we uh, aggregate on the, uh, we aggregate the post counts for all of those. So we did a local aggregation first on each of the shards. Uh, and now we do another global aggregation of those uh, already sort of summed number of posts. Uh, and then finally we limit everything to 20 because that's what the query expresses. Uh, and using this sharding scheme, uh, most of the uh, queries in the LDBC interactive complex uh, set of queries can be expressed in very similar ways. This is another example where the uh, the first part is quite similar. We again go to the person chart and find <coughs> friends of friends. Uh, that's a common pattern in these queries. And we then go to uh, the forum shards, but this time performing some other uh, matching and some other uh, kind of uh, aggregation. All right. Uh, that's basically all that we have. Uh, for further reading, uh, we have a blog post out uh, about our implementation of this uh, inside of Neo4j. Uh, the language constructs uh, are released under the OpenCypher project, uh, and those are open source. The implementation, the engine behind uh, uh, this sharding scheme is not yet open sourced. Uh, we're hoping that parts of it are going to get open sourced in the future. Um, right, and Michael has asked me to say that Neo4j is currently hiring engineers in all <laughs> in all positions. Right, thank you. Time for questions. Uh, could all this uh, declaration of how you want to use the shards uh, not totally be hidden for the user. So you just fire your own query, and the query uh, processor knows how the graph is sharded, and then uh, compiles the, the simple user query in the extended query like in show. Right, so the, the question is, couldn't this uh, directing what shard to go to in the queries be solved automatically by 
uh, by the system. And yes, it could, and we're sort of exploring things like that. Uh, but Neo4j is currently schema-less, and we're looking at solutions of introducing schemas that would dictate where data lives uh, in shards and going that route to eliminate these uh, sort of annotations of where to find uh, your data. More questions. What else can you do with the Pythonic approach? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, right, so we saw uh, what else can you do with, uh, with the fabric, uh, with this sort of uh, setup. So. Other use cases, of course, is like uh, data federation, where you might have a bunch of uh, already separate uh, databases, and uh, you want to run some sort of analytical queries uh, across all of your data, across your, let's say you have a microservice architecture where you have a bunch of different uh, uh, Neo4j stores uh, that are not connected. You might run uh, queries like this to to uh, aggregate data across all of them. Uh, yeah. More questions. Cool. Uh, thanks, Tobias, for the talk.